This is going to be a short little lecture on chipsets, buses on a motherboard. So let's take a look at the motherboard. Motherboard, here we go, is a nice picture of a motherboard. It's sort of the backbone of your entire system. It holds all the major components that make your computer work. But it's much more than just a table that just set things on. It also carries signals to the devices, power and synchronization signals. In addition, it has the, its own little sort of power control bridge. And all of this kind of happens through buses. Now, I know a lot of times when I have lecture, I say, okay, what is a bus? And then everybody, somebody yells out, oh, it's the thing that you go grade to school. Well, you know what, it is kind of the same sort of idea. A bus is actually um, something that carries information from one place to another just like a school bus is something that carries students from one place to another. So um, on our motherboard, when we take a look at all of the things that we have here on the motherboard, um, we have our processor, which is the most important thing that we've got on the motherboard. And the processor here has to talk to all of these devices, right? So in order for it to talk to all of these devices, there has to be a way for that information to get from the PCI slot to the processor, from the RAM to the processor, from the south bridge. This here is the south bridge. I am writing with my right hand right now, and I'm left-handed, so it looks so funky. Um, it's the south bridge to the processor. And so it does that by going on what's called a bus. So let's start by taking a look at the processor slot. So this is the processor slot of that motherboard um, sort of expanded, but I've got a picture of the processor here as well. This processor slot is called a land grid array processor. It's an Intel LG um, 1150, and the reason I know that is because I know that motherboard. Um, land grid array means that we've got uh, all these uh, pins are actually not on the processor itself. These are all little bumps. They're not pins. And so you can take the processor and if you dropped it or you handled it with your fingers, which you shouldn't do, but you want to actually handle it by the outside, you wouldn't bend them. The pins are actually all right here on the motherboard. These are teeny tiny pins and there are actually 1,150 of them, hence the name LGA1150. Um, and then these in here are a bunch of transistors and um, some other things that cache, um, stuff like that, that actually make the processor run. So each of these pins has a specific job and it's actually connected to a trace um, on the motherboard and I'll show you traces later. Um, and each of those pins then will be connected to a trace which is part of the bus. So they each have a very specific job. So we are very, 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 very careful when you put your processor in the slot that you do not bend any of these pins because they're really hard to bend back without actually bending the pins next to it. You have to get a little teeny tiny like um, razor blade to bend them back. Uh, in the middle of the thing there, there's where all of the action happens, right in here. This is all where all your action happens. The next most important part of the motherboard is the chipset. So the chipset on the motherboard is just a collection of integrated circuits that form a set that's needed to make your um, device do what it does. It kind of is what con connects everything else on the motherboard and makes all the other things talk to each other. So the main part of the chipset on the motherboard is the north bridge and the south bridge. And when you go and you buy a motherboard, you don't want to just buy a motherboard and go, okay, I just need a motherboard. Oh, that one's blue. It's awesome. That's the one I want. You actually are going to want to take a look at what the chipset offers and you make sure, of course, that's going to be pro um, uh, it's going to work with your processor. And once you find out that it works with your processor, then you want to start looking at things like the speed of the chipset, 
the speed of the front side bus depending on what you're buying because um, now the newer ones don't have a front side bus it's actually the north bridge is now actually on the processor itself um, and but you want to look at some of the other things that it has what kind of ram does it support um, does the ram is the ram that it supports fast um, are you going to be able to support new things that are coming out so can you just up flash the BIOS and then support something new that's going to be coming out. So going with a motherboard that's cheap may seem like a good idea, but it can cost you in the long run because you will end up with a chipset that maybe won't support everything you want or that actually slows down your computer. So let's take a look at the two individual main things that are important in the chipset. We have the North Bridge and the South Bridge. So on the Intel 1150 and the 1151, um, almost all of the functions of the North Bridge are actually on the processor chip itself. So if you take a look at a motherboard that has an Intel 1150 or 1151, you actually won't see a North Bridge. Um, the purpose of the North Bridge, what it does is it is responsible for communication between the CPU and um, RAM, PCI Express 16X or AGP if there is video cards in them, the South Bridge, and it has to be really fast and it also is known as the Graphics and Memory Hub Controller or the GMCH. So what it does is it actually kind of takes care of handling the um, communication of all those devices to the processor. So it says, okay, here's some stuff from the RAM, here's some stuff from the video cards, um, here's stuff from the South Bridge. And it makes sure that all that ha is handled smoothly. So the, the processor doesn't go directly to the RAM. What it does is it goes to the North Bridge to the RAM. It goes from the North Bridge to the South Bridge to the hard drive, from the North Bridge to the South Bridge to the PCI Express um, 2X, from the North Bridge to the South Bridge to PCI slots from the North Bridge to the AGP slot if it's an older video card or North Bridge to the uh, PCI 16X card if it's a if it's a um, newer one. The South Bridge is responsible for communication then with everything else. It takes care of USB bus, audio bus, serial bus, system BIOS, um, the interrupt controller, PCI Express 1 through um, 16X, if 16X if it's not being used for video, and then basically anything else that isn't video um, or um, RAM. It's, that's all Southbridge. So then the Southbridge just kind of organizes all of the other stuff and it organizes it through this little guy called the interrupt controller. Isn't that an awesome um, little uh, arrow I just drew? The interrupt controller is a device that actually makes sure everything takes its turn um, so that one thing doesn't like hog the processor. Um, and it, every single device has a number and each number is given a priority and the interrupt controller controls the priority um, through those numbers. And it used to be that there were only 16 interrupts, but now they can actually do what's called steering and interrupt steering and each device can be given um, sort of like virtual interrupts and so there's an infinite number of interrupts that can be but it used to be that there were only 16 and prior to that there were only eight um, and that meant when there were only eight you could only have um, see the controller itself had to have one and then you had one for the keyboard one for the mouse um, and so that, and then you had to have one for the serial bus and one for the communications bus and one for the other communications bus, which then that only left two other things that you could actually put on your computer. So you could expand it with and add two other things to have eight. So it's nice now that we actually can have virtual serial or virtual interrupts. Um, those are called IRQs. Uh, IRQs. I wish I could type. So we'll say I. Again, I don't know why I do this with my left hand. RQs, interrupt requests. 
are handled by the interrupt controller. So IRQ equals interrupt requests. And what they do is they interrupt to the South Bridge and say, yo, I need something from the processor. And the South Bridge is like, dude, wait your turn. And then what it does then is it sends that request through to the North Bridge and the North Bridge sends it to the processor. Um, and then the processor handles that request and it does its little processing thing. But if something more important comes along, then, um, so for example, something needs to be handled in the RAM and this is just an interrupt request that's for music or for audio, the RAM will handle first or the keyboard gets handled first. Keyboard obviously gets handled. It's a higher interrupt request. There are actually interrupts in all sorts of devices. Think about your car. Um, a lot of our cars now use uh, computer or computerized diesel engines completely computerized and they have interrupts in them so let's say you're driving along and all of a sudden you um, hit a puddle and you go into a hydroplane and you have to stop um, there are interrupts in your uh, in that entire um, engine so you hit the brakes at the same time while you are you know hitting the button on your steering wheel to, to change the music and your finger because you're kind of frozen there on the steering wheel and your finger is on that button to turn the volume up guess what if there has to be some sort of diversion of something the diversion is going to go right to your anti-lock brakes they're not it's not going to go to the music so if the diversion had to happen and it had to take away power for some reason to other things it would take the power away from the volume and it would take it right and it would go right to your anti-lock brakes which probably they're not on the same power grid but that's just an example so here is, a, here is a motherboard. This is an Intel motherboard. You can tell that it is a land grid array. I can tell that it is a socket 1155. How do I know that? Because it says socket 1155 right here. And you may very well see this on a test and I may very well say, what kind of, what kind of socket is this? And you should be able to say it is a socket 1155 because you can see it says it right there. If you take a look on um, this, you can see that there is no North Bridge. North Bridge would normally be somewhere around where P is, but P in this case is referring to the DMI, which is the motherboard identifier. Um, and it says that this is a GAB75M. So if I needed to look up um, the manual for this motherboard, I would be able to say, oh, I know it's a gigabyte, GAB75M D2V. And I would find then the motherboard manual online. Um, where is the South Bridge? The South Bridge is right over here. South Bridge is almost always located somewhere near your PCI Express slots. In this case, it is right in between the one PCI Express 16X and then there's some two X's right there. I think those are two X's. Oh, no, there's just one, sorry, PCI Express one. Um, and then you can see all over the rest of the board, we've got E would be SATA um, twos. L is a SATA 3. You can see it's labeled right under there as a SATA 3. Um, M is our clear CMOS. So if you needed to change, clear the BIOS, there is a jumper there that you can change. We've got front audio panels over on I. O is um, our VGA. N is the CMOS uh, battery. B is, of course, the processor slot. F is the P4 slot. G is the 24 pin connector power connector. Um, H is where you would plug in your system fan. Whenever you are plugging in your fan for your processor, you have to always make sure you, it says system fan because there are other fan connectors that look exactly the same, but they would not be controllable through the thermostat on the motherboard. So it's very, very important. You always connect it to your system fan. Um, is there anything else I've missed? I'm sure there is. Uh, D is a PCI Express 16X. Um, J is our front panel connector, so you connect that so that when you push the on button it actually turns on and your hard drive lights flicker when your hard drive is being accessed and so on. Uh, K is PCI Express 1X slots, and I think that's everything. Um, on our next screen we actually have an older motherboard and you can see that this one does have a um, Northbridge. In this case, this is an AM2, a socket AM2, and I can tell that it's an AM2 plus because it says it right over here uh, on the edge. And it has got an AM2 slot. In this 
case, it's not a land grid array. This is a pin grid array. And the difference between a pin grid array and a land grid array is that the pins on a pin grid array are on the, the processor itself. You lift this little arm, which you do on the other one too. And what happens is there is a little um, thing underneath that slides over just probably about a millimeter. You gently you sort of drop the processor in and when you put the arm down it slides back over and it grabs each of those pins and it's you can see on this one right there and kind of right over here you see there's like a couple of spots that don't have pins so it's pretty easy to drop them in because it won't drop in correctly otherwise so basically you do just sort of want to wiggle it in you never want to force it in or else those pins bend and um the am2 i can't remember how many pins it has on it but it's a lot it's like 975 something like that so you want to make sure that you are um always dropping them in very carefully um and uh that you don't ever force them in because otherwise you bend those pins and those are a little easier to get back together you can do them um you can do those uh, with a razor blade but they're still pretty hard um let's see uh, uh 939 900 oh 939 or 940 pins the m2 plus has 940 pins so d over here is the south bridge so you normally will find the north bridge closest to the processor so if you put the processor as always being north if you hold up your motherboard and consider the processor north the north bridge is always closest to the processor it's got to be the closest because it has the shortest bus and then the bus in between the processor and so imagine that there's a bus here in between the processor and the and the and the um um front uh, the a here is the front side bus in between the processor and the north ridge is the front side bus okay on this one we've got um, our status over here on g h is our cmos chip i is ide so that would be it would be able you would be able to connect two hard drives because on an ide channel you can connect two devices on SATA channels, you could only connect six hard drives because you can only connect one per channel. It's not really only, um, you could connect six. Uh, over here on M, now even though it kind of looks when you're looking at the picture like you can, can, this is a four pin, if you look at this little pink thing, it actually says it's a six pin, it's an eight pin. So this is a, a P8 on M. J is your 24 pin connector. F is a PCI Express 1X. K is a PCI Express 16X. Um, and then over here is another PCI Express 16X. Since this is AMD, um, you would be doing, let's see, what is it? Crossfire, not SLI. Now, some of the boards will do Crossfire and SLI, but um, in this case, you would Crossfire with a Crossfire bridge. So you put in two video cards, and then it, now they will go, you don't need a bridge, but on this one, since it's an old motherboard, you would actually have to get a Crossfire bridge that you just, there's two little, um, little things that stick up on the top of the video card, and you put it, you just stick this little bridge across the two of them. Um, L is actually pointing, oh, it, it actually says right there, A77. L is actually pointing right there to the DMI. So this is an AS Rock A77, and it is crossfire. It says there, you can crossfire. E is pointing to PCI slots. So this is an older one, so it does still have three PCI slots. Um, let's see, is there anything I have missed on here? No, I think we got everything. Oh, let's see, it's pointing to RAM. So it's got RAM, and in this case, it's going to take DDR2. 1066 is the fastest speed, and dual, it is dual channel. When you do dual channel RAM, you have to make sure, if you want it to work as dual channel RAM, that it is set up correctly. And I'm not sure if I can tell by this picture which is channel A and which is channel B. Usually, the way it would go is if I want my RAM to be dual channel, I would put... Um, them both in the same color channel, but that's not always the, the case. So on the motherboard, it will say um, which ones are A and which ones are B. So if it's if the two yellows are both A, then you would put the RAM in the same in the two yellows. If you had two sticks of RAM, um, the rules for dual channel is both sticks have to be exactly the same speed and they have to be the same brand. If you put two different speeds, then it will underclock the fast one. Um, 
if you put two different brands, then they just won't dual channel. They will behave separately. And the benefit of dual channel and then behaving the same is, is that it's like having, instead of two sticks of four, it's like having one stick of eight with a double fast buffer on it or a double size buffer on it. And then um, a doubly fast um, cache. So it's, it's really cool. Okay, so on the motherboard, we have buses, which I mentioned earlier. And those buses are basically communication pathways. And what a bus does is it carries data and it carries electrical signals, and then it also carries synchronization signals. So it makes sure that when one thing is communicating to the other thing, that it's not like overloading the communication path. So, you know, so for example, if um, we have to synchronize the way we speak, if I'm speaking, let's say you're learning a new language, like I know a little bit of German, but you're just learning it. And I start talking to you in German, but I'm talking too fast. So you say, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm just learning it. You need me to slow down. You need to slow down and speak slower and more clearly. And then so that would be a synchronization. So it'll carry. So each of the communication pathways on the motherboard will carry either data or electricity or a synchronization or some synchronization. Um, the types of buses that we have on the motherboard, it says here, you got PCI, you've got USB, we have the front side bus, super fast, that's going to be your fastest bus. We have the memory bus, which is probably your second fastest bus. And then the, what we look at on buses, how we measure a bus is by width. Um, and the width is always going to be by eight. So we have either eight bits, 16 bits, 32 bits, or 64 bits. Um, by device management, so what device is it going to? Is it going to the USB? Is it PCI bus? Is it AGP bus? Is it the memory bus? And then type, is it serial or is it parallel? That means do the, do the bits go one at a time? That's serial. So is it just boom, 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 that's serial, one right after the other? Or is it parallel? If it's parallel and it's an 8-bit parallel, then it takes eight lines and they go together sh sort of shoulder by shoulder. Um, so like imagine eight people standing in a line shoulder to shoulder and they are looking and they are walking down the line. If you take a look closely at your motherboard, you can see actually where the buses are. Now you won't be able to obviously see the data because it's just so many electrical pulses and ones and zeros. But you, what you see are called traces, and that's these little squiggly lines that are on your um, computer, um, or on your motherboard, rather, um, that carry uh, either um, data signals or um, electricity power, or they carry synchronization signals. And you can look at the buses, and they, and, or you look at the traces, and you'll notice something, that they're not all in a straight line. The squiggles are actually, they're, they're um, they're actually curved for a purpose. So if you take a look at the one down here in the lower um, right, see how squiggled those are? Or up here in the upper right, see how squiggled those are? The reason that they're squiggled is that it actually slows down the movement of the data so that they're delivered at the perfect time to this chip here. Um, when the data travels either in a serial communication or in a parallel communication. Now this is a really old board. So in this board, probably most of it was parallel communication. Um, but I chose this old board because of two things. One, um, in this board, you'll notice that there's actual damage. So right there where that arrow is pointing, there's damage. And I wanted you to see the damage. Um, you can see that the top of this trace is, is damaged and I don't know how it got damaged. Uh, so you have to be really careful when you're working with the motherboards, especially whenever you have screwdrivers or any piece, any tool, tools around it. Because with a damaged trace there, now all of a sudden you can see that this, this trace here that comes from this chip over to this chip, now those, those two chips can't communicate anymore along that trace. And I don't know what the communication is, but um, whether it's a data line or it's a synchronization line or whether it's a power line, probably it's a data line because there's no power in there. Um, it's now a damage. So probably this motherboard is, is kaput. Um, but uh, and the other reason I did is because it's so large. These, these the older ones are, have larger communication pathways because they didn't have the miniature. They weren't 
quite as adept at miniaturization yet. So let me show you the difference between parallel and um, parallel and um, um, serial communication. Serial communication goes like this. If this chip over here wants to communicate to this chip in a serial pattern, for one thing, they would not need all of these lines. They really would only need two lines. And what would happen is you would have just dot, 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 dot. You can see those dots and they're kind of sloppy, but they're moving. And they go and they can go fast as they want. And the other one can communicate back on its own line. So there's an input line and there's sort of an output line and I know it's sort of sloppy, but you really only need one line for um, sending and one line for receiving. And then you might have one line for synchronization that would just sort of communicate, this is how fast I can receive and this is how fast I can send. Um, or it can be completely asynchronous. Asynchronous means that it doesn't matter how fast the one can send and receive, they don't have to send and receive at the same speed. So um, if this guy over here is sending slower than this guy, it doesn't really matter. So that's really something that's kind of nice. Now, if it is a more of a um, parallel communication, the way that would go is that you would have the dots and they would all line up. So let's say this is four bit communication. And they ha what would happen is these dots have to line up and they would communicate Let's pretend that this is only four lines. They would have to stay in a row all together pretty much as the communication occurs. And there does have to be a synchronization. There, it has to be, everybody has to be talking at the same speed, at the same time. And if there is a problem, then what happens is we all start over again. Now, parallel communication, the benefit is that um, it is very, uh, it used to be much, much faster because serial used to be not as um, accurate. But now serial is much more, not only faster, but it's also much more accurate. So we use serial communications a lot more now than we used to. Um, which means we don't have to have quite as many traces on our motherboard and our chips actually are way, way smaller now. You can see these are huge chips. Um, other things that you can see here, you can see some diodes. That's what, uh, you can see some capacitors. Um, you can see some transistors. Uh, you can see these chips used to just be huge. Look at how big the solder points are on these buddy, on these babies. If you turn this over, you would probably cut the crap out of your hands on this thing. Um, so the traces are basically the communication buses, but the buses include the protocol, they include the pathway, and they include the speed, they include the bus width and all that stuff. Protocol is just the rules for how they communicate. So let's take a look at some of the important buses. We have the front side bus. So the front side bus is the bus that is between the processor and the north bridge. Remember on the newer motherboards, the newer processors, Intel processors, front side bus is actually right on the chip. Um, very fast. It has a very wide bus width. Um, if you get a cheap computer with a slow front side bus, like remember back in the old e-machine era or like as you're looking at um, like Black Friday deals or um, great Christmas deals, you want to actually take a look at your memory bus or your front side bus specifications. Because if that is slow, that bottlenecks the entire computer because if you take a look everything goes through the front side bus. The front side bus is sort of like the I-5 of communications here because everything goes through Southbridge, but look, PCI bus goes through Southbridge, ATA bus goes through Southbridge, um, but then um, it goes through Northbridge. AGP bus, well, we don't really have AGP anymore, but this is the video, video. So this would be now, it would be um, your, yeah, you can read that, right? That says video. Um, that would be now your uh, PCI Express um, video card. Um, and sixteen X. 
video card, um, memory bus. Everything has to go through the north bridge, which means, and then everything goes through the front side bus. So you want to really be sure that you have a fast front side bus. Um, our next bus is our memory bus. So the memory bus is also going to be pretty fast. So that's going to be between your north bridge and your ram. Um, if your front side bus is slower or your memory bus is slower than your ram then it slows you down um that memory bus is going to define how fast your ram can be you can't have ram that is faster than your memory bus because it's not going to do any good obviously that's like having a lamborghini on a 25 mile an hour road it doesn't matter how fast your, your lamborghini can go if the road is 25 miles an hour and that's the speed limit and there's actually no possible way to go over it um in this case the you know, obviously you can floor it on 25 mile per hour road and still go faster, but in this case, you can't go any faster. It is going to be one of the fastest buses on the motherboard, especially once you don't have a front side bus because you have your North Bridge on your, actually on the die. The PCI bus is the bus, it's considered the input output bus, also known as the IO bus. Um, the um, IO bus is responsible for talking to anything that is a peripheral that you add to your computer on the inside or the outside. So it's going to be for your um, expansion cards and then it's also going to be anything you add to it, um, you connect to the outside. Um, then you've got your ATA bus and that's going to be for your advanced technology attachment devices. Um, parallel ATA or serial ATA. So that's going to be your hard drives or your video, um, uh, your DVD or your Blu-ray or anything like that that you attach. Then it just talks to your SATA and pager drives. So now you know those super important parts of the motherboard. I also want you to be able to label all of the parts of the motherboard, which we talked to about, and then you're going to have a happy little quiz. Make sure that you understand when you go to buy a computer that the chipset is a super important thing that you look at. You don't only want to look at just the processor and then pick a motherboard because it's going to look really cool in the in your um you know see-through case you want to make sure that you're taking a look at what the chipset has to offer does it support raid does it support virtualization does it support um what speed ram does it support you know because if you buy a motherboard that because it's inexpensive and it fits your fits your budget um, but it is not very expandable or it doesn't support some of the things that you want to do in the future you might end up you know, having to buy another motherboard in the future that does what you want it to do. So the motherboard is more than just something that just holds all your parts together. It's got a very, very important job of making, of be, actually enabling the benefits that your processor um, actually provides. So you can get a really cool processor that does all these great things and then find a motherboard. Oh, great, this motherboard supports an i5 processor. And then you find out that your chipset doesn't support all the awesome things that your i5 processor can do. So make sure that your chipset is um, compatible with all of the bells and whistles of your super awesome pro uh, processor that you go and buy. Um, all right, so that now I want you to go and take the chipset and buses test quiz. Have a good day.